since my last update for you guys two months ago, I've dropped, drum roll please, 20 pounds. What is even going on? I'm eating all the carbs, I'm doing food flexibility, whatever the heck I want to eat, and I'm melting this stored fat off my body. And so I'm gonna share with you guys today, <sighs> an update and exactly what I'm doing and how I've been doing this. I have not been uploading to this channel because I wanted to make sure that everything that I was doing is something that I'm gonna stick with and it is something that is valuable enough for me to bring it to you guys here um, and that I think it's actually gonna impact your life, okay? So if you've been following along with my story, I lost 60 pounds with keto, okay? And then for like three years, I started slowly gaining that weight back and went through a yo-yo with like 20 pounds of that loss. Like usually this is how the cycle would go. I would be strict keto for a while, like two months straight. And then I'll have like a vacation or a holiday or a trip or some reason to go off keto. And so I would then eat carbs and because I had been off the carbs for so long, my body would swell up. I would gain a ton of weight overnight of water weight, right? This would cause my face to swell. This would cause my body to swell. And then I felt like I needed to go back to keto to lose that weight. Now, now what I didn't realize was I was fighting water weight this entire time because with keto, I would lose the water weight. Then I would go off keto and then I would overeat and I would eat way too much when I had the availability or I guess option to be able to eat whatever I want. And then I would gain it all back plus some. And then this just kept going on and on and on and on. I felt incredible guilt around food. Anytime I would eat a carb, I felt guilty. Anytime I was eating really anything that wasn't keto, I would feel guilty. And this guilt really started stacking up on me and, and getting to me. So a couple months ago, really three months ago, what happened was I decided to throw in the towel. I was just like, I'm over this. I'm so over this. I don't want to feel like I'm on a diet the rest of my life, but then slowly gaining the weight back. Who wants to be on a diet and gaining weight? It makes no sense. And so I was like, you know what, whatever. If I can just eat whatever I want and maintain where I am, I will be happy the rest of my life if I can just do that. At the same time, um, I was scrolling through Instagram and literally a microbiome test popped up. And a lot of the things that they were explaining on that test, I was experiencing myself, right? I was experiencing bloating, swelling, constant stomach pain without figuring out why, weight struggles, stubborn weight, not being able to lose weight. And um, so I decided, you know, what the hell, I'm gonna take this test. So I took the microbiome test, okay? That was step one. And then I got my results back. <laughs> And come to find out the exact foods that I was eating for keto were also the exact foods that my microbiome was fighting against. So my microbiome was producing toxic gases and creating a very unhealthy environment, making me extremely swollen, extremely bloated, in a lot of pain from food without knowing why, and stalled out. So my very first step was I'm going to hit my goal of not trying to lose weight, but just trying to shift away from keto just so I can eat like a food freedom lifestyle. Because if I'm not gonna lose weight with keto, I just didn't think I was gonna lose any more weight with keto. And I thought I was just gonna slowly gain it back. If, I, if that's the case, I wanna be able to eat whatever I want if I'm gonna be gaining the weight back or if I'm gonna be staying sold out, why would I want to just stay keto just and, and be in that place? It makes no sense. So I use the information for my microbiome test to then maintain that first month. So in September, I wasn't tracking food, I wasn't tracking calories, I wasn't tracking anything. I was just focused on my avoid list for my microbiome test and I maintained. I might've gained a little bit of water weight, tiny bit, nothing like crazy, um, but I started in October at 171 pounds 0.8, okay? October 10th, once I made the shift like, okay, wait a second, I can actually eat whatever I want with this food freedom flexibility lifestyle and not gain weight, then maybe I can actually lose weight if, and this is where I had been 
following some new people. I got out of the whole keto people and I started following some PhDs in the metabolism and I learned about how to burn body fat, okay? You cannot, cannot be consuming an excess of calories and expect your body to have a reason to burn body fat off your body. And that's where I think the biggest mistake with keto happened in my life. I was way over consuming calories because keto foods are so caloric dense. Like a, a tablespoon of oil is like 120 calories, whereas you can have like a bowl of rice for that. And what's gonna fill you up and keep, and keep your stomach full? You know what I'm saying? So I decided to <laughs> eat the foods on my microbiome list, stay away from the avoid list, which was mainly a lot of red meat for me. So I focused on a lot of chicken, salmon, that sort of thing. I have, I wanted to also heal my relationship with food. I don't want to demonize food. I don't want to have guilt over food. I didn't want to say like, oh, well that's bad and that's, that's good, that's healthy, that's unhealthy. No, I'm over that whole diet culture crap. And I just want to reach my body goals, feel my best and feel unrestricted. And so um, I decided to combine OMAD, which is one meal a day, okay? And that's, that's working on the insulin side of things, along with calorie restriction. So what I decided to do was stay at a calorie deficit. Now I use this app called the Carbon Diet Coach app. I'm not affiliated with them in any way, but I used that app to help me figure out what my maintenance calories were. So they told me it was about 2,200 calories. So this entire time I've stayed around 1600 calories and I track it in an app every single day just to make sure that I'm within my calorie budget and I'm not going overboard or I'm not eating too few calories, all of that. And then I combine that with OMAD, one meal a day. And so basically I fast for 23 hours a day and then I eat all of my food within one meal within one hour. That was most of the time. Some days I did two mad, which is two meals, and I would just split those two meals up and I would have the same amount of calories in the day within those two meals. But I, the reason I wanted to integrate the fasting in there is because when you fast and allow insulin to drop for long periods of time, your body has easy access to your stored fat for fuel, so it does not need to lower your metabolic rate to conserve energy, the same as the whole calories in, calories out. And that's why a lot of people gain weight, from my opinion, from what I've read and what I've seen, and that's why I wanted to protect myself from that. I don't want to negatively impact my metabolism, and so that's where I was combining the fasting along with the calorie restriction, eating a food flexibility, food freedom lifestyle. And when I do one meal, I really don't have to track because it's very, very hard for me to overeat in that one meal when I'm eating carbs, okay? Because like I said, carbs take up a lot more space and it's easier to get fuller on a lot less. And so for me, that just worked very, very well. Here was my exact strategy for every single day. One hour before I broke my fast, I would have what's called a Keto Pro, which is my first ketone of the day. So I would have that, you know, and you can really have that any time in the morning to the time you break your fast. But I like to do it an hour before I break my fast because it basically eases me back into my eating window. Also, it helps me eat less, be fuller on less, if that makes sense. And I notice personally when I consume that shake, before my solid meal. Even if there's carbs in that meal, my glucose response is a lot more stable versus if I don't have that shake, I end up having like a really large spike, which at the end of the day, I'm actually not that concerned with the spikes as much as I used to be. Because I'm only eating one meal or two meal, I might only be spiking my glucose once or twice, and that's not a big deal. Our bodies are actually designed to be able to spike glucose, insulin shuttles it into cells, and then, you know, it, it recovers. The problem is when you were eating all day long constantly, and then you are constantly spiking your glucose. I would have my one meal, and then at the beginning of my next fast, I would literally prime my fast. What I would do is because I would be, really my fast usually started around 3 p.m., so I would have my OMAD at lunch, and then my fast would start at 3 p.m., for the next fast, and I'd have my ketone in there so that I avoid the hunger, the cravings, overnight. It was basically like using these tools to be able to help me stick to OMAD very easily, effortlessly. I didn't feel like I was on a diet at all or that I was even really trying. So that was my strategy day in, day out, every single day. 
Keto Pro, ice and water, one hour before breaking my fast, have my one hour eating window, and then the beginning of my next fast, having my nat ketones to help me avoid the cravings, the snacking, and all that overnight. But the other cool thing is my muscle mass actually went up. Even though I lost 20 pounds, my muscle mass went up. And I think it's because of a couple things. For one, I've been lifting weights, so I've been strength training just from home, nothing crazy. I literally just have some weights. I'll do the arms, I'll do some squats, I'll do that sort of thing. I've been consuming these ketones while fasting, which ketones are muscle sparing. They help you maintain your muscle and they also help you build muscle. Okay, so I've been consuming that while fasted in the fasted state. Those two things I think have helped me with as far as the muscle goes because I don't wanna lose my muscle. If you guys know anything about the body, your muscle is really a big part of your metabolic rate because your muscle is gonna burn a lot of calories for for that tissue. So I didn't wanna lose that and I don't think anyone would wanna lose that really because you want your metabolism to be high, right? And so I'm losing fat, I'm building building muscle even though I'm only trying to maintain my muscle. Let, let's just get that clear. It's not like I'm like actively trying to build muscle in this time, I'm just trying to maintain. It just so happens that that's happening. So that is what it is. And in the times when I had vacations, uh, birthdays, times when I'm off OMAD, I'm still eating the same foods that I am while I'm losing weight. So I don't have that bloat gain. I don't have the swelling. I don't have the feeling like oh, I gotta get back on track. I don't even feel like I'm off track. I simply just don't fast that day. Or I will just spread those calories out and instead of one meal, it's two meals. You know what I mean? So it's very unrestrictive for me. It feels least the least restrictive to me. What's gonna be successful for you is for you to find what feels the least restrictive to you. For some people, that is keto, and that's okay. Like, that, that is amazing for you. I have nothing against keto, and I don't want anyone to think that I do have anything against keto because keto had a major part in my journey. It helped me lose the first 60 pounds I just needed to know when to jump ship and to start something where that is a little bit more flexible for my lifestyle so that I can maintain this long term because going forward, I don't feel like I'm on a diet still and this plane has not landed. I'm still losing weight. I think I've got another, like right now I'm at 151.8 pounds. It's exactly 20 pounds down in exactly two months. I would like to get to 140. And that, so 140 is my goal, about another 11 pounds from now. 11, 12 pounds. And then um, from there, maintain. And that's it. That's the goal. I should not be on a weight loss journey the rest of my freaking life. This is the end of it. This is the last weight loss journey you ever see from me, okay? And if you start seeing more of them, then you need to slap me because after this point, I am maintaining and I'm gonna just live a health, happy, healthy life because at this point, even if I stayed the same where I am right now, I would be so content and so happy with it because I feel so freaking good. I feel good, I don't feel restricted, I don't feel like I'm on a diet, I don't feel like I'm trying to lose weight, it's just happening for me. And so that's how I know when I get to my ultimate goal, I'm gonna stay there, you know? Because it's not like I'm trying to get to a finish line where I can like be like, okay, well, maybe then I can eat what I wanna eat. It's not like that and that's so cool. I'm obsessed with it, I love it. So I would like to do some more like vlogs here, what I eat in a day type of content. If you're interested in that, let me know. I will put in the description below my full story so you can read exactly how I did this. And then um, also in there is the information about the microbiome test, how you can get a big savings on that, what that is, and um, also these products that I'm using. I put together a specific kit, so it's called my Fast Start Kit. And if you wanna do exactly what I'm doing, with the Keto Pro and then the Keto Nat, I have it combined for 10 days for you so that you can do one of each a day and you can try all the different flavors. So it's a big variety pack, it's really cool. And so you can use the code RAINBOW to save $10 off that and also free shipping. So I'll put the link in the description below. Follow along in Instagram because I am extremely active over there in Instagram. YouTube takes a little bit longer for me to like actually upload content, but more will be coming here. So I hope you guys enjoyed this one. Oh, I feel so free, I'm so grateful, I'm so thankful. So thankful, so thankful. I am not still doing the same thing, expecting a different result. That was the most painful part of it all for years. You guys have seen it on this channel. It's like 
keto routine after keto routine after keto routine, doing the exact same thing, expecting to lose some weight and not losing any weight. I tried all these crazy, stupid things. And finally, <laughs> finally, I figured it out. <laughs> Thank you. And it's my birthday. So <laughs> tomorrow, December 12th, maybe that's when I upload this. I don't know, but that's my birthday. This is my 38th birthday. And I'm so proud of myself for losing 20 pounds for my birthday. Like, how cool is that? And I can't wait to go into the new year and to take you guys with me and to see what your results are doing this because it's just ridiculous. And I'm gonna be retesting my microbiome and everything to see the improvements, to see what has happened since then because I feel so many incredible improvements. And so I just can't wait to do that also. So stay tuned for all of that.